hello friends uh, welcome back to my channel so today i am going to talk on the about the secondary growth okay the secondary growth in pinus stem so the secondary growth in pinus stem okay in the thickness of a long shoot of pinus it occurs in the same manner as in the case of dicot angiospermous stem Okay, so today we are going to talk about the secondary growth in the long shoot of a pinus stem. Now, we, as we know, okay, when we study about the young stem in the long shoot, the young stem, it shows the presence of a cambium. So here in this case, we can see the cambium present in each of these vascular bundles okay so here the cambium which is present in each of these vascular bundle this cambium is referred to as the fascicular cambium okay the cambium in which the primary xylem and the primary phloem forms okay it is referred to as the fascicular cambium now what happened in secondary growth is that as you can see in this uh, second figure, you can see a new cambium strip arise. Okay, you can see in between these vascular bundles, you can see a cambium strip which arise from these medullary rays. Okay, we know that medullary rays are present in between these vascular bundles. So, a new cambium strip will arise from the parenchymatous cells of these medullary rays and this newly formed cambium it is adjacent to the cambium okay the fascicular cambium now each newly cambium strips newly formed cambium strips they are referred to as interfascicular cambium so this old cambium in between the xylem and the phloem is referred to as the in the fascicular cambium and the newly formed cambium is referred to as the interfascicular cambium. So both, as we can see here in this figure, that both the fascicular and the interfascular cambium, they join with each other to form a complete ring of cambium. So this cambium ring, as you can see here in this figure F, what you can see here that this newly formed cambium it will form it will cut the secondary xylem okay it will cut the secondary xylem towards the center and here the secondary phloem towards the periphery so first we have only this one right only the primary xylem and the primary phloem here you can see only the primary xylem and the primary phloem with the fascicular cambium so due to the formation of this interfascular cambium it will form the secondary xylem towards the center okay towards the center of the pith and the secondary phloem towards the outside towards the periphery <coughs> so this secondary phloem as you can see here in this figure which is produced from the interfascular cambium is less okay is less in comparison to this secondary xylem you can see here even in this figure that the secondary xylem is more as compared to the secondary phloem and also the this secondary phloem which is produced from the cambium it pushes the primary phloem you can see here the primary phloem okay towards the periphery so it this secondary phloem push the primary phloem towards the outside so that the this primary phloem it will become crushed and finally obliterated that is finally uh, destroyed or wiped out okay so here you can see uh, here in this third figure from this you can compare that it, here we have only the primary xylem and the primary phloem Due to the formation of this new cambium strip, that is the interfascular cambium, you can see the 
secondary floor uh, secondary xylem has formed towards the center and the secondary phloem towards the periphery and this secondary phloem it will push this primary phloem to the outside so this primary phloem later on due to the uh, growth of the stem it will get crushed and finally it will be destroyed or obliterated okay so here the secondary xylem remember one more thing the secondary xylem is compact okay this secondary xylem as you can see here is very compact and it constitutes the wood of pinus okay the secondary xylem it constitutes the wood of pinus so we say that it is pycnocyclic pycnocyclic meaning having dense hard wood okay because of a high proportion of the secondary xylem the xylem it mainly this xylem it mainly consists of tracheids and parenchyma and the vessels are completely absent so the vascular cambium it remains the vascular cambium it remains active throughout the life of a plant okay but its activity it gets affected by seasonal variations <clears throat> now let us uh, take a look at this figure here so as you can see here this uh, cambium it is active throughout the life of the plant okay but the activity it gets affected by seasonal variations now what happened in the autumn okay in autumn when the plants they do not require active translocation of nutrients get okay, active translocation of nutrients and ascent of sap that is the upward movement of water and minerals okay from the roots so when all these they do not require so what happened this xylem tracheids okay the xylem tracheids they remain compact Okay, they remain compact, thick wall with narrow lumen. Okay, that is the inside space of a cellular component is very narrow. So with narrow lumen and smaller bordered pits. Now this band of xylem here, okay, this band of xylem here is referred to as, you can see this band here. Okay, this band of xylem is referred to as the autumn wood so on the other hand in the spring season when the plant they need they need the active translocation of nutrients and ascent of sap that is the upward movement of water and minerals so what happened this xylem tracheids it become broad okay it become broad and uh, thin walled with white lumen Okay, the intercellular space in these cells they become white and having larger bordered pits so in this case this band of xylem is referred to as the spring wood so in the secondary growth of pinus we have the autumn wood and the spring wood so now thus the two bands of the these two bands of the secondary xylem that is the autumn wood and the spring wood they are produced in one year and these two bands they make up the annual rings okay they make up the annual rings and also the annual ring of pinus are much more distinct okay they are very distinct and one can easily determine the age of a plant by counting these annual rings since they are produced one in uh in one year okay every year so simultaneously with this secondary growth okay in the thickness of this vascular region that is the vascular bundles now we can see a new cambium ring also okay a new cork cambium Okay, a new cork cambium is also produced. A new cambium ring developed in the 
outer cortex so you can see here this is the cortex so in the outer cortex there is a new cambium. okay so this cambium is referred to as the phylogen now this cambium it produces dead cells okay dead cells of cork referred to as the phelan towards the outer side dead cells you can see here this portion so this newly formed cork cambium it produces dead cells okay the cork that is the phelan towards the outer side and the living cells okay of the secondary cortex this secondary cortex referred to as the phelloderm towards the inner side so i hope it's clear here that the newly formed cambium it produced the dead cells that is the cork or the phelan towards the outside and the living cells okay of the secondary cortex that is the phelloderm towards the inner side so these layers of cork cork cambium and cortex okay they constitute the periderm they are referred to as the periderm now gradually as you can see here in this enlarged picture okay the enlarged portion this is the enlarged portion okay of the second of the stem of pinus as you can see here these three layers okay the cork co cambium and the the cork the cork cambium as well as the secondary cortex they form the they form they constitute the periderm now what happened here i want to show in this picture the epidermis okay it ruptures the epidermis it ruptures and the cork cells okay and this cork cell it will form a protective covering you as you can see here the epidermis it ruptures and the cork cells it forms a protective covering in the old stem so these cork cells they are highly lignified okay that is they they are they become rigid and woody by the deposition of the lignin in the cell walls so they are highly lignified and they check the loss of water they check the loss of water from the general surface of the stem and sometimes these layers of cork sometimes they are interrupted by the lenticels okay the lenticels which develop to facilitate gaseous exchange the lenticels that is the porous tissue okay consisting of cells with large intercellular space and their function is to facilitate gaseous exchange so sometimes the cork is interrupted by these uh, tissues these lenticels